Hi, this is Mr. McGovern. This is the fifth video in diffraction gratings and interference patterns in the Level 3 Wave series. Um, and we're going to look at the second formula we can use for these interference patterns. So we used uh, in the last video, video 4, in lambda equals d sine theta. Uh, there's another formula you'll see in your formula sheet, which is n lambda equals dx over l. So when can you and can't you use that? The short answer is, you can use this if the angle between uh, the central bright spot and the first bright spot is relatively small. So what do I mean by relatively small? Kind of a rule of thumb is less than 10 degrees. If it's a small angle less than 10 degrees, you can use this n lambda equals dx over l. What does everything mean? Um, d is the distance between slits. It's the same as before in the other formula. x is the distance between um, the middle bright spot to the bright spot you're investigating, and l is the, between the diffraction grating to the screen, or between the double slit to the screen. So an example of using that formula, um, this is a, a question from an exam, I've kind of modified, we've got two speakers, so it's kind of like a double slit, um, a screen is 20 metres away, and James and Tara are a metre apart, James is in the central loud spot, and Tara is a metre from James, and it's the next loudest spot, calculate the wavelength produced by the speakers. So, first of all, am I allowed to use the formula, is it less than 10 degrees? Um, I've got myself a little triangle there with my 20 metres away and 1 metre across and that's a tan because it's, I've got opposite over adjacent. Rearrange that and the angle there is 2.9 degrees. Less than 10 so yes I can use it. Now as you get better and better at physics and better and better at maths I can kind of just look at those numbers 1 metre and 20 metres and I can without having to work it out I know that's somewhat less than 10 degrees. Now that I can use this formula I'll happily put my numbers in. Uh, D is a distance between slits, which is in this case a distance between speakers. X is a meter, L is 20. Throw everything together and I get a wavelength of 0 0.06 meters, so about 6 centimeters. However, what happened if I um, were to have used the first formula, the D sine theta? D is 1.25. Um, I worked out the angle before with my, my tan of the triangle, was 2.9 degrees. Um, throw everything together and I get lambda is 0 0.06 meters which is again 6 centimeters. So I got the same answer. Okay, So you can choose what formula to use in this case. Often it's easiest to use um, n lambda equals dx over l usually because you know if you're doing an actual experiment those are the things you'd measure. You'd measure the distance between bright spots, that's x. You'd measure the length of the screen. It's a bit harder for you to measure the angle, you'd have to calculate that. So often that's why um, dx over l is the formula you'd choose to use in the first instance if that angle's small enough. So second half of this video you can stop watching unless you're calling yourself an excellent student or a scholarship student um, and you want to find out where that formula comes from. So this is the original formula that's always true, and I made a video on, on where this formula comes from. Um, if I've got a double slit there, and I'm looking at a bright spot some distance x from the middle, and the slits in the screen are l distance apart, I can draw myself a little triangle there, where one side of the triangle is l, one side is x, and just like before, I use tan theta um, is my relationship between x and l. What the hell is tan? So tan is um, sine over cos. That's the definition of tan that you hopefully learnt in maths. Our sine and cos, um, we've got graphs of them just to remind ourselves what they are. And when we're looking at small angles, so le less than 10 degrees, if you look on the cos graph, um, cos of an angle is very close to 1 for, for very small angles. So because of that, um, when that angle's very small, and we know tan is sine over cos, but if cos for small angles is 1, then at very small angles, tan is approximately equal to sine. So what I can do is, I can then do a bit of substitution. If I know that my triangle here with x and l is tan theta equals x over l, but that is approximately equal to sine theta for very small angles, then I can just substitute in, instead of d sine theta, um, I can just put in my d tan theta, which is x over l. So instead of d sine theta, I just do d times x over l, and there's our formula. So we've got this formula is true all the time. This formula is true for small angles, less than 10 degrees. And the other time it's true, which is the same, effectively, as small angles, is um, when the wavelength is much, much smaller than the distance between slits. And the way I get that is um, if I divide both sides by d, so I have lambda over d, 
and that equals sine theta. I know it's I can use this uh, formula dx over L with small angles and small angle sine theta will be small when lambda over d is small. Lambda over d is small when lambda is much much smaller than d. So that's another really quick check. If you've got been given the wavelength and the dis and the slips, then you can do a quick check. Ah oh, yes, I can use um, dx over L as my formula. Hopefully that helped you.